Welcome to Love Your Family Again and Again and Again and Again, the podcast where we focus on parenting with love and clarity. I'm Dr. Marcy, a family culture expert who for over 20 years has been helping parents to create happy and strong families. Today, I am joined by Matt, who is a dad of two, and I am delighted to chat with you about your daughters, about your family, and see what unfolds in the conversation. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. I know that in your house, there are three women and you. So tell us a little bit about your family and what that's like. My name is Matt. Uh, I've been a stay-at-home dad for 12 years now. Emily is 12, and my youngest daughter, Carla, is 10. My wife, Aya, is Japanese, so we're a multicultural, bilingual family. I'm not bilingual, but they are. So that plays into uh, the makeup of our home. With my oldest daughter, she's now started middle school, and that has been challenging for all of us. Yes. So this is her first year in middle school, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Seventh grade. Very exciting. So what are some of the great things about her being in this tween age in this transition to middle school? Well, the good thing is, is like her world has opened up. We were going to a, a more specific school that was focused on Japanese language. And so we were kind of in this safe little bubble where there's other families like us. Uh, she could openly like, you know, J-pop and uh, anime and sushi and bring a bento and not feel uncomfortable. So we, she was worried. We were a little worried how that transition would be. But her world has opened up and she has opened up. And by day three, she's had friends and said, I love middle school way better than elementary school. So that has been good to see her mind exploding and see her possibilities be much bigger has been good. Yay. I love that. And at whatever age that we watch our kids grow and expand and see the world differently, it's always really exciting. And I love that you are celebrating that because sometimes these transitions, when our kids grow, especially middle school comes with more independence. We as the grownups have some feelings about that some grief, some confusion, some loss of our, of our little kid. You know, a lot of people were really uh, sad when their kids went to preschool or kindergarten. I wasn't sad at all because one, she wasn't sad. If she had a hard time, that maybe it played into my emotions more, but she was so ready. So I was very happy that this is, I, this is something good for her, something I can't give her right now. So this is good for everybody. So I was very happy I didn't have that. But with middle school, I'm happy. My, my goal has always been like, I want them to not depend on me for everything because then I haven't taught them anything. So she started making her lunch. She started getting up on her own. Like, so that was good. But all of the other social change that has come with middle school has been fast and hard and very tough. We're going to talk about the fast and hard and very tough after I highlight something you did amazing, which I love. Preschool, it wasn't hard because she was excited to go. So you didn't have a hard time because she wasn't having a hard time, which is amazing because so often we as the grownups have feelings that we share with our kids, that we talk with our significant other in front of our kids, that they weren't worried. They weren't scared. They were delighted, but they overhear us or they feel what we're feeling. And then they get worried. They get anxious. They get sad. And you said, no, she's excited. So I'm going to be excited. Let's do this. And that is amazing parenting. And now let's chat about what's hard about middle school. Uh, let's see. It's her first experience with a phone. Cell phones. Yep, so that's a thing. We, we did some research and we found a company that it's just a phone. It's not, uh, there's no social media on it. There's no internet on it. It's just a phone. And I think there's GPS. So you know, I can see where the phone is, but it looks like a, a smartphone. So she can not have this old, you know, night 2000 flip phone, but like saved by the bell, Zach yeah. Morris's old giant cell phone. It's not that. Okay, yeah. good. So she looks cool. So she looks cool. She's got the phone. Um, that's new. Cause 
we never had limits on a phone because she never had one. So now before school, she was starting to text friends. After school, she was texting friends or taking it to her room when she was doing homework. And, you know, it was this whole other distraction that we didn't really have to think about before. And that's a moving target. It is going to keep evolving. So you have to keep having conversations, keep creating rules and changing them and morphing them. It's not a like, here's the plan. And then that lasts for the next three years. So that's just been an adjustment. All the school now is through online stuff. You know, and I know a lot of that changed with the COVID, but still in elementary school, there was still a lot of just like in paper stuff that was sent home. But now like everything is on this dashboard. There's more assignments, but she's definitely been more focused on her social squad, I guess, than than academics, which makes sense. And, you know, for the first month or so, good. Like I want you to be comfortable, have people you're comfortable with, but then how to talk about all right, let's not get off track of why you go to this place every day. Is she keeping up with her schoolwork or are you finding that she's falling behind? I think she was starting to fall behind for a little bit, but recently she started to get back up. She's also more focused on the grades than learning than she was before. And I'm sure that's common, Yes, but it's just another one of those changes. Before, you know, we never talked in elementary school, said, well, you got to get good grade. We never talked about that. It was more, do you understand? Do you need help? And now she's like always signing in. Oh, I got four points wrong or oh, this, oh, that. And I, it's, it's just all about the grade and that. And so some of that is you can also redirect those conversations, right? So in preschool, when you let her emotionality lead the state of what was unfolding, you can try to flip that by when, she, when you hear her say, oh, I got four points off. I wish it up which is a little bit of that perfectionism that I always am worried about when kids start demonstrating, saying, well, what was the test about? What did you learn? Oh, you clearly know the material. And that's awesome. Yeah. So highlighting that piece when you hear her talking about the grades, the points, the, you know, where she fell in the bell curve and going, wait, but what was it about? What did you learn? What do you know? So that she ends up reflecting and realizing, oh, I, I got it. I understood the material. Mm -hmm. I might not have understood the particular question or how to do this format of the test, but I learned it. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Working on the process over the end product Mm -hmm. is a wonderful gift to teacher because we're always in process. You mentioned uh, the perfectionism. I think she has a lot of that where she doesn't want to ask for help because she doesn't want to be seen that she doesn't know something. Yes. When she's good at something, she wants to show me all day long. But I'm like, do you need help with your math? No, I got it. And then I'll see the test that maybe she struggled. Do do you want to sit with me? You know, you're not in trouble. Like, I'm offering to help you because I love you. Is this something we need to work? No, I got it. I got it. She has uh, so many people who've offered their time. But if she's not good at something, she doesn't want them to see her not good at something. Yeah, which very human of her, very relatable of her, but also something that I would really encourage you to work on now. So that's mm-hmm. not what happens to her as as she's an adult and trying to find a job and figuring out what to do in her career. We all need help. We all continuously need help. And so if she's not open to doing that with schoolwork, which can be hard to navigate, especially if everything's in the tech world as opposed to paper that you can see and hold. I would look for projects around the house, whether that's, you know, cooking a meal together where you need her help or you make sure that you have something that is hard to find and up on a back shelf that she's going to need to ask you for help for of where is this or some other project around the house of taking out the furniture in the spring for the backyard that she can't do herself, that she's going to have to ask for help, that that's part of the nature, but it's not a right or wrong scenario. Mm -hmm. Right. There's not a I'm a failure if I need help doing this, but I am going to need help doing this. So she starts to say, Mm -hmm. I need help with these easier places and then move it into the academics. Okay. The other piece of that that I would suggest is for you and your wife to start highlighting where are the moments that you messed up? Where are the moments that you asked for help? Where are the moments where you were planning on making something for dinner and it did not come out good 
And so now we're having pizza because I ruined the new meal. Often we don't share that with our family. We don't talk about that as adults of I had this meeting and it went horribly wrong or I had a dentist appointment and I showed up an hour early because I was off in my calendaring appointment. Those things to highlight them so she gets mistakes happen all day, every day. Just, you know, a couple times a week at dinner, mention it. Have your wife a couple times a week mention it. So she starts going, oh, that's part of life. That's how we learned. You're right. We don't talk about that as much. Yeah. And so when we start seeing perfectionism popping up and in middle school, there's a lot of other influences that aren't your immediate family, but you can use your immediate family to create a bigger influence because you will be the biggest impact she has. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's a, that's a really good suggestion. Awesome. So how are things going with her friends? Because middle school kids are not always kind are not all, you know, it sounds like she has a a good group of friends, but so I'm wondering if there's anything in the social dynamics. As far as I know, the friends seem okay, but that's the other difference with elementary school as I knew her friends and knew her parents. She already got invited to go to Chicago to see a K-pop concert with somebody that I didn't know. I get this random text from a woman who says that she's so-and-so's mom asked if my daughter can go with them overnight. To, it was like, wait, who? what's your name? Like, one, I don't know who this kid is. I don't know who you are. Like, what? It just seemed too much, too fast. It was like a month into school. I haven't met anybody, knew anybody. So There's there was, a lot of trust. There's a lot of trust. So at first, my daughter was a little bummed out because I said no. But then after I really spelled it out, I'm like, you do understand why we're saying no, right? I said, imagine if me now, your dad at this age, I left to stay in another state with somebody that you didn't know and I barely knew. How would you feel just as my daughter knowing your dad is going with somebody he doesn't know and you don't know? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. No, you're right. That Yeah, I understand. And she dropped it. So the logic and reasoning is there, which is fabulous. I love that she got the invite because that shows that she is building good friendships. But I also love the boundaries you're creating to say, no, that that's too much too soon. And if then it explain it. In our area, like, I don't even know this lady's name. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with a sleepover in our own neighborhood. Maybe yeah. let's start with dinner with your yeah. kid so that I know what's happening. Yeah. Let's go off for ice cream, something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And knowing that those are small steps that you need before you take these big ones is awesome because then you can build up and, you know, next summer she can go on that outing. Yeah. But first you have to meet the parents. First, you need to know the kid. And that's can be really hard to say no to your child. It can be really hard to say no when some other parent is saying, but this is totally okay. And that comparison of what other families are doing versus what you're doing can create some conflict. And can create some doubt as a parent. And Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to just just trust your own inner voice. I mean, it sounds like you do. But let me reinforce, trust your own inner voice of if this is not right for your family, it's not right for your family. Thank you. Because that is hard sometimes to, am I being overreactive? Am I being too sheltering? Am I being, you know, it is hard to sort out what's your gut feeling versus, you know, the what's the outside influence. Yeah. And it is tricky to figure out that difference. But when you stop and you go, I know this isn't right. I know this isn't okay. And when you stop and you think of, well, I know what the upside is, right? Like who doesn't want to go to Chicago for a K-pop concert? I'm in and I don't even like K-pop, but like, let's Mm -hmm. go. It'd be super fun. Yeah. But the downside and the challenges that could come of if your daughter gets there and is uncomfortable with these people that she realizes she doesn't know, You can't go pick her up. There's no turning back. If something happens, it's a much more significant deal. And when you start thinking about that and going, oh, it's not right Mm -hmm. because I don't trust these parents. I don't know. And I don't know that my daughter is going to be comfortable there. Always listen to that. Even if it feels over, I would so much rather a parent be slightly overprotective Mm -hmm. than risk something bad happening because especially in these middle school years, right? When she's in high school, when she's 16, 17, you're not going to have as much control. But in these early years, teaching her how you make the decision and talking her through that 
mm-hmm. will allow her to understand how to make good decisions socially in the future. That's a good idea. Okay. Uh, the other thing with uh, her social network this year that came fast and quick is uh, she's got a boyfriend. Ooh, tell me more. <laughs> So the only reason I know is, um, you know, part of the deal with the phone is that we have access. This is not a private diary. Um, so periodically, I just check to make sure there's no bullying going on, no, nothing crazy. Smart. And so I see this text uh, exchange between her and a boy. I'm like, okay. And I've always tried to, you know, a lot of my friends are, are women. So we've always tried to show that, you know, men and women can be friends. It's not just a boyfriend, girlfriend situation, see people as people. So just friends with a boy. I don't care. But then I see a text to her friend that says, Steve said that he likes me and I told him I had a crush on him too. So we're basically dating now. Oh, okay. All right. Um, all right. So pretty quickly within a week and seeing their text and she started, they play Minecraft on the phone after school sometimes and hearing them talk, they sound very just like friends and he seems like a good kid. He's good at math. He likes to do his homework. He seems like a good influence on her with that, but it's after a week that they're always love you. I love you more. I love you. I love you. Love you. Love you. I was terrified of this stuff in middle school. Part of that, my past emotion is coming up that like, why is she so comfortable with this? Like, isn't she supposed to be terrified like I was? But also like part of me knowing that she has a lot of anxious feelings and the perfectionism, I don't want her to tie her self-worth and her self-esteem to somebody else already. Because I remember feeling like I was a nobody, nobody cared. Oh, this girl likes me. I must, I must have something if somebody else likes me. But to have those feelings for myself, I'm still struggling with as an adult. All of this is going in my mind as I see this, love you, love you too. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And there's probably a part of me who's making this bigger in my mind than it is. But also, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So let's chat about this because there are a couple different parts I want to pull apart. First, Mm -hmm. I just want to, again, celebrate your parenting of she has a phone and it is public knowledge that is this is not private that you will be going through and seeing what's going on. And here's why. The fact that that is open and transparent is fantastic because too many parents do it as a secret and then that breaks trust because when you find something you have to figure out well do I talk to them how do I talk to them about it how do I let them know no no no. just like this is on the table you have technology that I am paying for therefore I will be checking to make sure that everything's kosher Mm -hmm. I also love that you're aware to check about bullying to make sure you know we we often think of I want to make sure my child's not being the victim of bullying but it's also just as important to make sure that She's not saying anything mean to other people because both are super easy to do when you don't really get how that works and kids don't. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. love all of that. Yes, please. More of that, which then makes it easier for you to be like, I saw these messages. What's happening? And open that conversation. So yay, that. Now, when it comes to dating, there are Mm -hmm. two big pieces. One is you as a dad, how do you feel about the fact that you're 12 year old daughter has a boyfriend versus what does she really need and what type of support does she need in place and separating those two and creating a space for you to have all of your feelings as a dad whose little girl has a boyfriend she's saying I loved I love you too all of those feelings are valid Mm -hmm. so do we want to chat about that for a minute do you have some feelings that well I'll tell you we were in the car. It was just the two of us. And I'm like, all right, this is my opportunity. Like, let's make this oh, public knowledge. Let's just talk about it. So she's been talking about this kid. And so I brought it up. So I said, so do you got a crush on Steve? I'm trying to be all light and breezy, not a inquisition here. And she gets this, you know, giggly smile and doesn't say anything. And then she says, why? So, well, you've been talking about him a lot and, you know, you're in middle school. That's very common to have crushes. And then she says, maybe. 
I said, how about him? Does he have a crush on you? And then she gets even bigger smile and googly face. And then I said, is he your boyfriend? And then she's like, oh, and then says, maybe, yeah, kind of. So I asked, what does that mean to you? And she couldn't really answer. Because I get that's a weird question to answer, especially your dad. So I started like, you know, do you just walk to class together? Do you hold hands? She's like, oh, no, no, no. And I said, you know, have you kissed yet? And again, I'm trying to be light and breezy as I'm able to be. And she says, oh, no, no, no way. Then I briefly talk about that. I know you know about boundaries. You know, make sure you respect your boundaries, but also to respect other people's boundaries. Because I could see her being the aggressive kid be like you need to do this or do that or hold the door for me or you know i'm not always talk thinking physical but just things like that and i told a story how when i was in high school my girlfriend started to insist that i hold the door for her for every single thing and the more she demanded this of me the less that i wanted to be nice and so i just keep that in mind you know, with boundaries, it goes both ways. I don't know, Dad. And then, then I really haven't mentioned him since. But she's very open. Up. I'm going to talk to Sam and play Minecraft. And she does it in the living room in front of everybody. And that's great. But I feel like I should at least check in or do. And now it's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's ch chat about what you want to do. So one thing that makes this unique to your situation and that will change when she's 15 versus 12 mm -hmm. is that there's not the physicality there, right? It's not that you're wondering, is my 12 year old as a dad, I apologize for saying the big words, but like, is my 12 year old having sex with her boyfriend? And do I have to talk about that? Right. Um, which at 15 or 18 or somewhere, somewhere down the road, she will. And mm -hmm. so some of it is also finding the way to talk about the physicality in a way that doesn't shame it but also that brings the appropriate reverence, I think is, the, is a really good word that I like using in this situation, the reverence for that physicality. It's something that can be beautiful and bonding and fabulous, but also really significant and important and hard and confusing if we do it too soon. So some of it is like when you, I love that you were like, well, do you hold hands? Do you, are you kissing? The, the like tiptoeing in and she's like, no, no, no. And you could tell by her reaction that you don't have to start having that conversation yet, mm -hmm. but keep opening that door a little bit of asking, you know, what are, what are you guys, what is the physical connection between the two of you? So that she knows that you're not, oh my gosh, don't touch a boy. That's hor like, ah, uh, mm -hmm. and the other thing that it sounds like you did beautifully is you were as comfortable as you could be in that situation. So she feels good talking to you about it and having a place where she feels like she can go and ask questions and understand the fact that she feels like she can sit in the living room in front of everybody and connect with him is awesome. So all of those pieces of her comfort is powerful so that this doesn't become a secret because you don't want there to be a secret boyfriend. It sounds like she just hadn't told you yet, not mm -hmm. that she was keeping it a secret. And that's fantastic. So the next step, just like every other hard conversation with your kids, is it's not one and done. It is that, that you know, maybe it's weekly, maybe it's every other week, just depending on the depth of conversations you're having, is just to check in. How are things going with your boyfriend? What's happening this week? I heard you playing Minecraft with him. How How is that? Mm -hmm. And showing up with curiosity and with openness so that, you will celebrate the good that's happening there because what it sounds like is like a friendship with a more intense label, mm -hmm. right? It's not that they're doing anything. They're not going to the movies and holding hands in the back of the movie theater. There's none of that context happening yet. So it's just a friendship with a different label. And so celebrating that lets her be comfortable talking with you about her boyfriends so that when it is... I'm going to go to the movies with this boy and we're going to share popcorn and <laughs> you have all of the reactions of a dad mm -hmm. as you should quietly in your bedroom when she's not there yeah. that she also feels safe saying, Hey dad, that was really fun. Or dad, I went and he wasn't nice to me and I didn't like it. And mm -hmm. all of those things that you hope she comes to you with good and bad 
that you become a space for that. Talking to my wife about it, her first reaction was like, oh boy. I couldn't quite tell what she thought. So she finally said, you know, she's 12 years old. She likes a boy and that boy likes her back. She's like, I think that's pretty cool because she's like, I didn't have that till I was 18. So I think it's cool. And I'm like, but what about like the I love you? She's she doesn't love that either. And, you know, my daughter's assuming that my wife knows because I know. But she also hasn't acknowledged to our daughter that the boyfriend exists either. I might tag team this with your wife of Mm -hmm. encouraging her to acknowledge it to Emily and be like, hey, I hear from dad that this is happening. Like, what's what's going on? Mm -hmm. Because the way you navigate now, whether ready or not, she's doing it. So acknowledging it and being open with it and her knowing that she can come to you with these conversations is going to dictate what happens with bigger conversations down the road as there are more things that come on the table that you're never going to be ready for. Yeah. Right? Your 16-year-old daughter going to a high school party where there's drinking, you're not going to be ready for that. Her having her heart broken, you're not going to be ready for that. All of these big things are going to come ready or not. Mm -hmm. So thinking about in this moment, what do you want it to look like in those big moments for her? What kind of support do you want her to feel from you and act accordingly now? Which to me is the, maybe you tag team in every other week, one of you, whether it's you or your wife, check in. How are things going with Steve? What's happening? I overheard you guys saying, I love you a lot. What does that mean to you? Because she Mm. might just be like, I don't know. All my friends are just saying that. We just say it. Versus like, I really, really like him. Like if she is going into the fantasy of he's going to be my person for the rest of my life, it's a different conversation to have with her. Mm -hmm. And you can say, what does that look like? And bringing the reality check in if she's in the place where she's feeling like she's really falling in love. And I would not negate and be like, you're 12. You don't know what love is because she'll fight against that. But being like, well, that's that's really interesting. How do you know what your life is going to look like? Where are these thoughts coming from and showing up with curiosity around it? And then making sure you have places to digest the fact that you're not ready for it, that it feels really hard to be having these conversations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. And then I, I want to tie back in this self-esteem piece that you're talking about, about her getting her self value Mm -hmm. from herself, from her own idea of herself versus this boy who likes her. And I don't ever think it's one or the other. We all love external validation, right? When people tell us we did a good job or they appreciate something we did, we're going to feel good about that. When somebody loves us, whether it's 12-year-old love, Mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, 22-year-old love or whether it's 42-year-old love, it feels really good. And so that is going to be a piece to be, you know, as your wife said, to be excited that Emily gets to experience that somebody likes her back. Mm -hmm. that she's worthy of that and keep making sure she is seeing the good in herself. So talking to her about what did you do that was amazing this week? What did you do that is great? What what is great about you as a person? Mm -hmm. And so just keep having these conversations with her about her own character, who she is becoming, what she is great at, so that she is constantly self-reflecting And hearing her own voice saying, oh, yeah, I did amazing on that math test, even though I got four points off. Oh, yeah, I am. I am a really kind friend. That other friend was having a hard time and I I showed up and made them a picture. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. I cleaned up my whole room by myself. I am capable of doing hard things. Right. So that she keeps having that self-reflection so she doesn't ever just rely Mm -hmm. On on the boyfriend or the friends or any other external place that tween and teens often get a lot of information from. Right. That's helpful. I can do that. Good. And as a as a parent, I don't know that you're ever ready for your kid to start dating. And I will say this feels like a beautiful, (laughs) gentle introduction. Thank you. (laughs) Just you know, just keep hearing that. That, you know, she didn't jump into the deep end. That is true. Like in the big picture, we do feel very happy that middle school is going so well for her. Yeah. But we've also acknowledged to ourselves that for us, it's just been a lot of change so fast that we're like playing catch up. Yes. But in the big picture, yes, we're very happy that she's happy and thriving. 
Yes. And I love that duality that you can be happy for your daughter and reflecting that to her while also you sit in your own time and space and go, that's a lot happening in a short amount of time. And I feel unprepared. I feel like it's been hard to catch up with everything that she is shifting with. Yeah. I think also part of it is coming off of the, you know, the the COVID lockdowns and restrictions where it, it feels as if time stopped, even though it didn't. But it's like after, okay, now we're we're open and there's no masks at school. And then, whoa, it went from fourth grade to seventh grade, like that whole yeah. two years in the middle where we thought time stopped, like didn't. And so I think that's another aspect that makes it feel like, whoa, what just happened? Yes. It's a big jump. It's a really big jump. And knowing that that's part of why this feels overwhelming will help you digest it. Because time did stop. And she, because she kept growing, jumped into middle school and she was ready. Mm -hmm. But you weren't because you miss those years in between. You miss those growth moments where there were more sleepovers that were unsupervised, where there were some of those independent pieces we didn't have, you didn't get. Mm -hmm. And so that doesn't make this moment easier, but it helps create that understanding of why it feels like such a big gap that you're leaping over. We keep saying it's like emotional whiplash. She had a lot of anxiety going into middle school. All of her friends were oh my gosh, we're going into middle school and it's going to be different and hard. And so like for a good year, there was that intense, anxious energy. And then after the third day, it just like totally did a complete 180, which is great, but it was like getting punched in the face. Yes. But at least it went that way. Yes. Yes. Right. As opposed to the other version of her going, this is going to be great. I love it. I love it. And then after three days, the anxiety and the, this is hard and I don't like it. This is terrible. Yeah. Of all the directions to go, I'd pick this way. And for her to shift Mm -hmm. her anxiety that quickly is a gift, even though it feels hard. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. So many good things that we chat about today. Mm -hmm. If there is one piece that you're like, I'm going back into my family, Emily and I are going to get down into this next time I see her and I'll ask her about her boyfriend or the next time I see my wife, we're going to talk about this to put in place. What's the one takeaway from our conversation? Probably I I need to start acknowledging her friendship with her boyfriend and just making that a part of conversation, no matter how uncomfortable I am. Yeah, I love that. Also highlighting my failures in my everyday life and also um, bringing up things where to boost. So for her to realize how great she is by herself. So Those are the three things that popped into my head to do. Three great takeaways. Matt, thank you for being here. And thank you for your transparency in all of the pieces of the parenting that's happening. Because there's so much that you're doing so, so well. And your desire to talk through these big, hard moments. It's awesome. Thank Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you for listening. I know that your time is precious and limited, so I am grateful that you shared it with me and Matt. And I'm curious, what's your one takeaway action? So share that in my comments on my website at drmarcy.com. You want to be the first to know when new episodes come out? Go to drmarcy.com backslash podcast and sign up for my mailing list. Do you want to be a guest on a future episode of Love Your Family again and again and again and again? Then go to drmarcy.com backslash podcast guest. And let me know. And finally, do you need individualized help for your family? Do you want to have a private session with me or someone for my team virtually or in your home? Then visit drmarcy.com backslash contact and reach out. And remember, blue skies are ahead and we're going to get there together.